Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get lit, we get fly, we get drunk, we get high, but to the masses, we are podcast called Verified. I'm your host. I am Joe Paul. We are brought to you by Radio Pushes and Results of No Hype. Make sure you check us out at theverifiedpodcast.com. And right now, we got a very special guest because I've known dude for so long, you know, and I've seen his come up. He was actually in one of my music videos. So hopefully I could like clip it in where we could like look at it. So let's pretend like we're looking at it like, oh, shit, remember? So hopefully we can get that in there. But my brother has been shot five times. He's a one of the lyrical rhymers that's put in that lyrical boom bap rap back on the map. I didn't even mean for that to rap, but, you know, I do that because I'm, you know, kind of lyrical. But without further ado, my man, The Real Prayer. What up? How we doing, my what brother? Is, what it is? Salute, Joe. You already. Well, I appreciate you taking your time to, you know, come here and, you know, being that, you know, we have to do it via Zoom rather than in person because of this pandemic. Let me first ask you, how are you doing? How are you holding up? How are you managing? How's your family? How's your mental? You know, I just wanted to check man, on this. You know, everybody good, man. You know, you just got to have, you know, knowledge of self and, you know, a little spirituality and know about God and know that it's really a pandemic. And, you know, I, I haven't been wearing no masks or nothing or no gloves and I never got sick. Nobody in my family got sick. You know, we ain't been wearing no masks. So, you know, everybody good, man. You know what I mean? Because we know what's going well, thank on. God. And, well, thank God yeah. that, you know, you haven't. I mean, unfortunately, there, there have been you know, over 400,000 deaths because of this thing, you know, and one thing I can say is I've done so much research and I was, I'm always one of the people that goes against the system and it's like, nah, fuck that. You're not going to tell me what to do. But in this case, it's a medical thing and it shows, it shows respect, like when you're out in public. So if you're among like your own bubble of people, completely understand. But the only thing that I ask is if you're ever out in public, just wear a mask because there might be somebody like me that's taking care of my father who just had triple bypass surgery and his immune system's compromised. So if he even gets a cold, something bad could happen. But anyway, this is more about you. This is not about the pandemic. Let's let's shed light on the subject and you know, let's talk oh, about yeah. some real shit. So, but I'm glad I'm glad that you're doing okay and you haven't been affected. So talk to me about early prayer. Talk to me about, you know, little man. Like, you know, how'd you grow up? Where'd you grow up? You know, um, I know that you've dealt with a, you know, a whole bunch of um a whole bunch of tragedy, you know, coming up, you know, with the loss of your mom and the loss of your father, you know, so uh, rest in peace, God bless the dead. You know, but talk to me about, uh, about Little Prayer. Well, you know, my, my, my life is, um, you know, I really talk about my childhood much because a lot of my childhood is, is, is like a blur, you know what I mean? So I don't really talk about my childhood, you know, I was in a bad car accident as a kid and broke my ribs and arms and you know what I mean so I was in a coma for a month so a lot of my childhood is a blur I only remember from certain certain age to now you know what I mean so that's how that's how that is with my with my memory and all that that's that's rough and how old were you when you when you got into the car accident I was 12 oh my goodness so a lot happened for you at at 12 years old yeah 10 my mom's died 12 I was in a car accident and then you know, after that, I got out of that, it was in the streets. You know what I mean? I was, you know, being angry that my mom is gone and not really believing she's gone and, you know, rebelling so she could pop up and be like, behave yourself. She never popped up, you know what I mean? So that's what kind of pushed me towards the streets and hanging out with the bad crowd and, you know, it's history from there. I hear you. you know I, hear you. I mean, uh, I feel like, a lot of the uh, the artists that I've interviewed, you know, have dealt with, you know, some, you know, s- severe traumatic moments, you know, in their life. And it kind of shapes them into who they are today. And whereas they might have been going down like a dark path internally, I feel like it kind of strengthens you because it's like it forces you to kind of step up and almost, you know, it's almost like even though you rebelled and went to the streets, I know deep down inside you were like, I still want to do good because I know my mom is watching me, you know, but it's like. But you have to lash out and you have to learn from your, from your mistakes. So it's like, I say this on a lot of my podcasts. It's like, to regret any decision you ever made in the past is to not fully appreciate who you are today. So even though... Yeah, I, I try not to regret anything I did in the past because your past is what make you who you are today. Facts. You know what I mean? A diamond goes through a lot of pressure to be made. You know what I mean? So 
I just, I, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy and, you know, but you can't really regret because you can't go back. So why, why regret your past when your past makes you who you are today? I couldn't agree more. I couldn't That's how I feel. <clears throat> it's those little pivotal things that happen in your life that kind of shape you who, who you are right now. So it's like you better yeah. you know, go through those experiences and deal with them. So this way you could learn from a mistake, you know, or or grow and everything is a blessing, you know, either yeah. way. So That's a well. So as a child, now um there's a very interesting thing that when I was doing research about your story. Now, is it true you actually moved in with an older female while you were still like 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I was hustling and I was working for this, you know, this Jamaican dude. Um, I ain't had no ID and all that, you know, so he got me an ID. And when they asked me how old I was, I told him I was 20. You know what I'm saying? So when I was 13, you know, 12 about to be 13, and my ID said I was 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I didn't think if I'd have told him my real age, I told him I was about to be 13, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have let me hustle for him or, you know, gave me the responsibility he did. You know what I mean? Of, you know, giving me a gun and trusting me with money and, you know, hustling. I figured if they knew I was a kid, they'd probably kill me and take my stuff or, you know what I mean? So, you know, and Shorty was, you know, Shorty was smoking. She was a, saw smoking crack. So I just, you know, was living with her. Um, I had my own crib and I had my own apartment, but, you know, I was still, you know, staying at her crib and helping her with her yeah. son, you know what I mean? That was like your trap house right there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Helping out with her son, giving her money, get groceries and, how you know what I mean? How she was like 22, 23. I feel like at some point we need to like cue the Law & Order SVU music. Like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't her fault though, cause she didn't know. You know what I mean? You know, right. everybody. You know, they say I've got a baby face to this day. You know what I mean? So uh, they just she just thought I was young, and she, I had I had a gun, I had a chain. I'm driving cars. You know what I'm saying? We need, so, to, we need to make a movie about this. No, uh, and, just, and the, only, the only reason I bring that up is because you know. I mean, I watch a lot of, you know, biographies and forensic shows and and something like that, even though you were lying and saying you were like older, the fact that, you know, she was 22 and you're 12, 13 years old having relations, you know, with her, you know, psychologically, my first. Yeah. Yes, psychologically, even though we think we're the man, psychologically that, you know, could, you know, end up being traumatic in the future because, we don't know how to accept that, you know, as, as, you know, early teenagers. Like, I mean, there's a reason why a statutory clause is in place, you know, because, you know, you don't know what really consent is. So I, I'm glad that you're doing phenomenally well, you know, so, so it doesn't look like it, it, it's affected you at all. So no, it bothered uh, me. Some, certain things bothered me for a while. Like I used to think getting ahead was nasty. You know what I mean? I, I never liked getting ahead you know, from, from that situation for years, you know what I mean? Like I had to really grow, you know, when I grew up to be a man, you know what I mean? I started to like it, you know what I mean? But I didn't like it as a kid because, you know, she's the first person to give me head. And I thought it was the nastiest thing in the world. Like it's nasty. Like, you know what I mean? So it kind of, it kind of bothered me for a minute. Like I, I didn't like it for years. Okay, yeah, so man. that stuff was kind of triggering, you know, like in the yeah. when you were coming up as a man, you were like, all right, I'm associating getting ahead with this, you know, crackhead, you know, that I, I'm yeah. with, you know, so yeah. uh, I, I'm very, very interesting. And, and, and I'm, I'm sorry to bring up such a, you know, a sensitive topic, but, you know, uh, here on the Verify podcast, we uh, we go in depth, you know, we try to do, you know, things that other interviewers don't. And because I got, you know, a close relationship with you, it's like, I feel like, you know, I could ask you because genuine concern. It's like, you know, uh, you know, are you okay, you know, with everything? Let's see, who do we got? We got our first, and we have our co-host. Where, uh, where is he? He was just about to sign in, but then he left. So I, I got, I got, I got exciting, you know, surprises throughout the the whole podcast, which you know, should, which should be fun. But I don't know where he went and why I can't add him in now. But hopefully, he uh, he pops back in. 
So yeah, so the only reason why I bring that up is because, you know, I had a genuine, you know, concern. I'm like, well, you know, does he know that that could possibly be, you know, you know, triggering and traumatic, but you've obviously dealt with those demons and you were able to put it behind you. So, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm glad that you're, you're doing phenomenal, brother. And, and you look fantastic. You know, you look, you look like you've actually lost a little bit of weight. So I've been working out and, you know, kind of changed the way I eat and, you know, just doing a lot of things different, man, you know, be, be more healthy and self-conscious about things I eat, you know what I mean? That's great. That's great. So, you know, so in coming up, you know, in your childhood, did you ever think that you were going to be anywhere in hip hop or did you think you were just going to be, you know, on the street, like doing your thing, like for years? No, I never, I never thought I'd be in music because I, I just, I wasn't, I, I kind of shunned away from music, from hip hop and, you know what I mean? Because of my sound, I kind of shunned away from music, but I never thought I'd be rapping. I never, you know, took it serious or I just never saw it. You know what I mean? I always thought different. Okay. You know what I mean? So you had a so you had a conscious knowledge knowing that you sounded like Biggie or Sean. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. So yeah. yeah. People, you know, people always said it like, yo, even you know, when I talk, they're like, yo, you remind me of something such. So I just always knew I could rap. I just you know, just shunned away from like, oh, you remind me of such B.I.G. or you know what I mean? So I just, you know, I wasn't, I ain't want to rap. You know what I mean? My boy Butter is the one who got me to, to rap on a, you know, do a song. And, you know, that song started bouncing all over the place. I had, a, I, you know, I met, I met uh, Chris Gotti. I met Eric Sherman. I met a couple people, you know, coming up before I met Bus. You know what I mean? And uh, Chris Gotti even. It's like, yo, man, it's, it's scary. When he heard my music, he's like, how do we market him? Like, He's like, you dope, man. You know what I mean? Chris Gotti is like, he don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Well, shout so out to Chris Gotti with, uh, with Adventures Music. He's going to be a guest on the show in the yeah. upcoming week. So I'm going to be really, really excited for that. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I love his story. I, I li I've already done the research on it because, I mean, I. I've been in the music game since 96. So it's like I, I came up, you know, learning all of this shit firsthand and seeing, you know, who's the power players? Who do I have to go to? You know, so I've always wanted to chop it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my man brother took me, had a meeting with him and all that. So, you know, that was the first person I met, you know, in the, in the, in the music industry coming up. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm rapping on Instagram. Got the, got the texts and the DM. Oh, meet me at the studio. Call me back. I oh, yeah, we go, we, go get to, we go get to all that. I mean, we're, we're jumping, like, way in the future. I'm still – well, I want to – it has to be a slow buildup. We got we to gotta build yeah. the anticipation for, you know, for my viewers out there because their, their attention spans are, are, are very, very small. So we want to keep it interesting, entertaining. But we're going to get to that, that time, you know, that call me, call me, call me, call me. <laughs> Can you, get, can you come to the Quad Studios? So we, we're gonna get to that. Trust me, because yeah. that, that's fucking awesome right there. Um, so, um, so you met Chris Gotti. When did you first start actually putting pen to paper and saying, "You know what? Let me try and do this." Uh, I started putting pen to paper when my man Butter was like, "Yo, do a song. You know, I'm gonna give you three hundred to just." you know, do 16 bars. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, give me 300 to lay some bars on the song. He's like, yeah. So I did it, I laid it, and the song just started circulating. You now, were you, thinking in your, were you thinking in your head, you're like, hmm, 300 to write a 16 and just record it. You can think about how long you have to, you know, stand on the block to make 300, you know, flipping them things. No, I wasn't really, I wasn't really thinking about the bro. I just... I didn't know where he was going with this. I'm like, because I'm thinking, you know, ah, you're going to give me 300 to spill 16 bars and nobody going to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't got no record deal or nothing. So that's why I did it. You know what I mean? I'm like, ain't nobody going to hear it. Oh, she so did it. You're like, yeah, where's this going to go? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you I did, did it. got to make this movie. This is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I did it. And songs started circulating. And people started, you know, who that? People started saying, who that? 
do you know? Well, do you know how it circulated? Like who leaked it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I really don't like, know how it circulated. Like, just because he he was just like sending it to people he knew. Like you know what I mean. And one day we was in Queens, and the dude in the I think it was a CVS or a writer. I don't remember was playing it in the, in the parking lot out his car. And I was like, yo, yo, walk into the car, because we came out of the... So we walk into the car, and we see a dude playing it. Like, yo, how did he get that song? We all the way in Queens. How did he get that song? You know what I mean? And, you know, so... That'd be interesting to find out. If any viewers know how it circulated, what was the, what was the name of that first song? Uh... I got the record too. I got to find it. I got to pull it up. All right. Well, all, all my you know real prayer fans, you know, uh, I I know you're out there. If it's you... the video was still up on YouTube. Me and Butter. Or, uh I can't remember the name of it right now. Well, we'll figure it out. We we will figure it out. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it right now. How that circulating? I would love to know because I love to know how the the evolution of things happen and word of mouth, you know, really travels far. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't imagine that, you know, people are, you know, going to be like, yo, did you hear like, like Biggie's dead, but we just heard him on, on a, on a record. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that, that was one of the reasons why I think it started moving the way it was moving because people thought it was an unreleased bid or, you know what I mean? Something like that. And it just started moving. Like, you know what I mean? It started circulating. And then so next thing, and Butter knew Chris Godden. Oh, okay. So Butter had that relationship with him. What yeah. I want to know is, and I think my viewers want to know, when you walked outside of the CVS and you heard them playing it, did you feel good or were you in shock? Like, I want to know. I was how, more in shock. I was, like, I, was, I was just in shock. Like, was, you know what I mean? I was in shock. Like, that's sound like the song we did. You know what I mean? So. You know, we started to walk over there to the dude. You know what I mean? We ran up on him like, yo, where you get that song from? And he got he got paranoid. He got scared. I don't know if he thought he was trying to rob him. He drove off, knocked the gate, knocked, went through the gate. You know what I mean? And drove off. You know what I mean? Like, yo, so we, you know, we had to bounce. He probably showed a four or five on the hip, and, you know, and, and he just. I don't know. He, he thought we was trying to get him. Or, but, you know, this is New York, so. This is true. You know I mean, he drove never, off. And, you never get caught slipping. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, yeah, he drove off, man. So I'm like, damn. We just wanted to know where you got the song from, homie. Like, you know what I mean? Man, it sounds like that dude ran faster than your boy Roger. <laughs> Roger. Yeah. yeah, he took off, that, man. That, yeah, that, that was a no, no. That was no good, right there, Roger. You should not have ran. You should have fought your own battles. You should not have allowed Prayer to take away that time on the shoulder. Yeah, he took you, off, man. You scoundrel, you. Okay, so uh, so after that point, then what happened? So now it's it's kind of circulating and, and bubbling, you know, uh, on the street. So then what happens? So take me through the next uh, the next course of action. Uh, we met. Then he took me to meet Chris Gotti. And, um, you know, Chris Gotti said, you know, he, he liked it. He said, he was like, yo, the hell, my arms is raising up. Look. He's like, he just don't know what to do. You know what I mean? He don't know what to do, how to market me. And he passed. He's like, yo, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pass. And we left. We walked out. I was like, no hard feelings. And we left. You know how'd you feel that when it happened, though? You know, I just, I, I ain't feel no way. I just, I submitted it ain't meant for me to rap. I just left with his dad and just kept it moving. You know, just, you know what I mean? I just went to go see what, you know, we went to go see what he was said. You know what I mean? I didn't want to go in the first place, but it was like, yo, just come on, let's go hear him out. You know what I mean? Went up, when we went up there, I think I had four or five songs at the time. Uh, we let him hear it, and the dude, he loved it. The crew that he was with, they loved it. He's like, man, we don't know. I don't know how to market this. You know what I mean? He's like, I was just listening to Ready to Die in my car yesterday. You know what I mean? Then he meet me today. So, you know, it was crazy. I, you know, I was like, all right, cool. Slapped them five and walked out of the. I mean, people said the same thing about Shine, you know, like as soon as he came out, you know, and and he and he has a similar story to you because obviously being from Belize and, you know, from Brooklyn, you know, 
you know, you guys just look completely different. But, you know, I think a song with you and Sean, I mean, I, I don't know if that would be possible or not because he's like, he holds like some political, you know, um, you know, uh, official title now. So I don't think he's ever coming back to the rap game. But, Look, you know, it's the ambassador of music. Right. So when you kind of when you get to know Shine's voice, it's like you could make a distinction. And I don't know if I'm biased because I've been listening to you for years, you know, and to me, it doesn't sound anything like Biggie. It, it's the craziest thing. When I first heard you, I was like, oh, it kind of sounds like Biggie, but it'll work, though, because he he got bars and. You know, he got that swagger, you know, that, you know, that New York is, you know, lack nowadays. So, but to me, you don't even sound like Biggie anymore. So it's like. Look, so I, I don't think I, I don't think I, I don't think I sound like Biggie neither. But when people hear it, that's the first person that they, they take, they go to, like, it's either Biggie or Sean. But it's more, it's always Biggie, 90%, it's always Biggie, 80, 90% of the time, you know what I mean? So. I don't think I sound, I think apples and oranges, but you can't, pe you, some people tell me I sound like Big Pun. I'd be like, huh? I sound like Pun? People hear what they want to hear, man. You know Listen, what I mean? people see what they want to see. They hear what they want to hear. People have been calling me Pitbull's clone and Vin Diesel's clone for years. I don't see how I look anything like them. People tell me I sound anything from Method Man to Cool G Rap to Cannabis to Rock Him, and I'm, and... The one person they never say I sound like is Eminem, so I'm I'm like grateful, you know, for that, you know, because I think I, have, <laughs> I think I have you know quite my own style, but you know it, it's weird in this environment because you know I, I started this podcast because you know our revenue stream has been cut because we can't do our appearances, can't do our performances, you know. I mean, you 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 know you're walking around without a mask doing what you got to do, so you know more power to you. Just be safe, please. Yeah, that, yeah. New, that new strain is a motherfucker. Like I've been doing the research, it's crazy, it's crazy. But um, so our revenue stream has been cut because everything's been shut down. We can't go to a, a club, well not here, we can go to Atlanta or Miami or Houston, but New York clubs are not open where we can get a couple hundred dollars just for showing up, showing our face, hey, and then we out, you know? So I never, I didn't feel that it was right to like release music. So I was like, what could I do? I was like, I got 20 plus years as an artist getting interviewed, so I know how to, showcase other artists and ask the right questions that people want to hear so yeah. so here you go now we on the verified podcast baby you know this this how we do so when covid's over i'm gonna start you know releasing you know music again you know but for right now i just body him with the freestyles you know on instagram and you know i shine light on you know the the up and comers that you know have made it that really got a chance to blow you know so and i told you yeah. the first day that i met you i was like you a star. I was like, you gonna make it. I was like, well, that's a fact. I'm super that was proud. Before I met Bucks, well, well, right. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's like, you know, I mean, I knew you. Uh, I mean, it's called like the. I knew you had that je ne sais quoi, you know, to to really make it out there. And when I saw your drive and your grind and slowly building and building and building, and all of a sudden, you know, a boss, a boss, rocking to the beat, you know, discovers you. It was just like. He's the perfect person because he's a fucking giant, you know. And and I just had uh, Spliff Star on here uh, uh, the other week, and what a fucking funny episode that was. He's he is the fucking best. So so shout yeah, out to the whole yeah, Spliff, 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 Spliff is funny. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about how how that conversation happened. Like I know you were at like an uh, like you were at a buffet, you were eating, and if anybody knows, you never disturb a big man while he's eating. Unless, unless yeah, it was my here. birthday. Me, me, Uncle Knowledge Ice Cream. You know, we was at the uh, the seafood spot, the buffet spot, and you know, Kev Webb, a friend of Buster, started texting me, texting my DMs like, "Oh, call me, call me." It's like, "Yo, who this dude, man?" So I called him. I was like, "Yo, what up?" He's like, "What you want to feature?" <laughs> I was charging a band at the time for. He's like, "Nah." That's better than a feature. He was like, yo, meet me at, but you meet me at Quad Studio tonight? It's like, Quad Studio? It's it's my like, birthday. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, yo, it's my birthday, bro. I'm chilling right now, bro. Like, yo, just meet me at Quad Studio. I said, all right. Oh, so he didn't he didn't say, well, I got a birthday present for you then. Nah, he just said this would be worth my while. Slick. You know what I mean? Slick. So I was like, yo, this dude 
want me to come to quad, meet him at quad studio every night. So, you know, we jumped in the van after we left there and we went straight up there. Yeah, you know, I, jumping I the like, I feel like it's like a scene out of the movies where you're like, regulators, mount up. Everyone got the yeah, strap. Yeah. Like, you know, we don't know, know, what, we know what we was, we don't know, we don't know what, what it is. You know what I mean? So we went up the, you know, it was like not expecting it to be that. You know what I mean? And, you know, we parked up and we watching and we calling. I see him pick up his phone. He's like, yeah, I'm outside. I don't see you. I said, I'll be there in a minute. You know what I mean? And, Walked up on him like, yo, what's up, Kev? Why? Be like, yeah. Crapped He's up like, yo, on. come on, we got, we got to go upstairs or whatever. So yo, they, they went me, you know what I mean? See, so they got to come man, with me too. No, he, he moves stealthy. Okay, you yeah. ain't gonna see, you ain't gonna see him coming. Yeah, so the bad man like, thing. Yeah, he's like, it's cool, you know what I mean? So we all went upstairs, you know what I mean? And we got, we got upstairs. Bus got up out the chairs like this, him. Huh? Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 right before we get there. When you're in the elevator going up yeah. as a, you know, emerging hip hop artist, I got, I mean, cause I've been in quad studios a bunch of times. My, my podcast was supposed to be filmed there before COVID happened. Yeah. What were your thoughts as you're in the elevator on your way up? Did you have any envisions of the, the legendary people that have recorded in that studio or was no. it really, or were you just on guard because you had no idea? On guard, like a month, I was on guard. That's you it. Couldn't enjoy, you, so you couldn't enjoy it just yet. I would have been yeah. like, thinking, Tupac in a shot here, Biggie recording here. You know? I, I just, I was on guard. I'm like, <laughs> what is this about? You know what I mean? What is this about? In, with your hands in your pocket on the guard. Oh, yeah. Just, just wanted to paint the picture for my lovely guest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we definitely was on guard like crazy. Like, you know what I mean? And then um, we walk and be like, to get the elevator open. You know, I'm looking left, right. You know what I mean? Checking the surroundings. And they like, right in here. We following him. We walk in there. There's a couple people in there. So I still don't, I'm not putting no faces yet. I'm just looking at the people. Hands in my pocket. You know what I mean? Busted up. It's like, yo, this him? It's like, yeah. He's like, yo, what's up, man? He's like, then everybody stood up and was like, how you doing? You know, just shaking hands. And me and my crew over here to the left, they all right there. And, um, Back. He's like, he like um, yo, um, who you sound with? You know, it's been history from there. You know what I mean? That's yo, prayer, what up, boy? Yeah, we what go. We got the celebrity popping right there. What up, what, what up, what up? You know, I have to come through, pop out for my nigga prayer one time. Your boy Shampoo in the building. We live Shampoo, and direct. What it is. I am verified. We are on the verified podcast with the biggest in New York City. Mr. Craig. What's, What's good, son? What's the word, my guy? Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. All that shit, brother. Yeah, man. Happy New Year, man. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's good, Shampoo? How's, good? That, how's your night going? He, he was uh, good, man. On our way to the lab, you know what I mean? Just wanted to pop in, say what up, because I know I, I keep forgetting. So, I'm, you know, I'm tapping in. I'm, I'm driving and lobbing. Okay. Your, your presence is always welcome, no matter what. You know, uh, yes, the, the, the nostalgia here is that, like, I remember the first day I introduced you guys together when we were right outside Le Souk, you know, for, I think it was for one of my, like, one of my parties, you know, that I used to throw over there. So, um, but yeah, I'm glad you, you know, you got to sign in because I wanted you to talk about what was your first reaction when you first met Big Man Prayer when you first saw him? When I first heard him, <clears throat> I was like, you know, this guy can spit. And of course, you know, the, the typical, he sound like Big at first, but when you listen to him, he don't sound like Big. You know what I mean? But the first time you listen to him, you be like, damn, this nigga sound like Big. But then when you listen to him, he don't sound like Big. You know what I mean? <clears throat> if, if that makes listen, sense to you. Were you just listening to our conversation before when you tried to sign in? Because we literally just said the exact same fucking word. Shit. Nah, I did That's well. That? <laughs> That's well. You planned it on I, I know you did. Fuck. And then, then, and then, when, then when I heard him spit, I was like, "Yo, this nigga got heat right here." And then, and it was consistent, like, cause you know, motherfuckers, you hear them spit, 
then you know some some of these verses be trash. You be like, nah, the last joint was trash. Now nah, every time I hear him jump on something, it's always memorable. It's something you be like, yo, he nailed that right there. So that's when I was like, yo, this guy got something special, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, so. Yeah, and for people that don't know out there, Shampoo has been in the music game for, you know, 20-some-odd years, has worked with some of the biggest and the best artists out there in the game, you know, currently employed by the music industry, and that's his job. Like, so he can actually yes, sir. because of music. So his word yeah. is, is pretty reparable out there, I'd say. That's I'd right. Say, that's that's right. And respect them. Exactly. Absolutely. I say yeah. that Shampoo, you know, he's very... He, you know, he's verified in real life. We say he's verified and verified. Verified in real life, baby. That's you know what right. I mean? And I'm the first one to move him around. I'm, I'm That's the right. first one to move That's Faye right. around in these clubs. It was shampoo. Again, right. the beginning, I'm always at the beginning, baby. Always. That's right. That's, that's monumental. I want, I want you to speak on what was the DJ's response and the crowd response when you first brought Prayer around and started promoting his first single? First, when him first, he's he's such he's really a nice guy. Like when you meet when you meet him, you see this big guy. You be like, and he got the animals around him. You like, oh, he. You think he's unapproachable, but when you meet him, you like, yo, this guy's a fucking really nice guy, man. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. So, yeah. So when I introduced him to people, he was, you know, that was the first impression. People were like, yo, bro, he's a nice guy. I fuck with him, man. He's and that's that's always key. Because I always have those type of problems with artists. I bring them around. They may like the music, may not like the artist. You know what I mean? They may be like, yo, I fuck with his music, man, but that nigga's a dick, bro. Don't, not, <laughs> yo, don't bring that nigga over here. I don't want to take a picture with that nigga. I'll play the record. I'll play the record, but that nigga's a dick. You know what I mean? But So when, when people really genuinely get out and want to talk to him, I know that was more than just, you know, the music. You know what I mean? It's, it's personal. So, and how and how important you know while, while you're there how important is having those good intentions and good relationships as well as being a good spirited person because i always say you attract more bees with honey than vinegar so how right. important, how important is is it as a promoter to bond with an artist that actually is a nice person pardon me one second because i'm trying to put this gps at the same time sorry I feel, yeah. You know, but I, so pray. I, I hope you don't mind the shampoos here because you know. I, no, I, no. I, I, we we good people, bro. Because, you know, how, that's yeah. how we're all connected to begin with. Oh you know, yeah, man. Yeah, shampoos yeah. running me around in the clubs before anybody. Yeah, you know what I mean? we we, yep. we hit up like at least six, seven clubs, man. At you night, know, man? we was we was running around. We was hitting joints, yeah. going to Jersey, and then going to New York. Whoa, so we was doubling up. Whoa, five, six clubs a night. Whoa. You know what I mean? It was crazy. He was definitely ripping and running with me out here. He was definitely yeah. out here working. He was working. That's a fact. So the general consensus from all the DJs as well as the other promoters that you were associated with was that they fuck with his music and they fuck with him as a person. And I bring that up so that any artists that are watching this that aspire to actually, you know, do something, you know, you need to have like an ace in your fucking pocket, you know, like shampoo that when you have the budget to work with somebody as monumental as him, you got to put in the work also, as well as be a, just not be a piece of shit. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, like that's, that's the bottom cool. line. Don't make my job hard. You know what I mean? Cause my job is to, like I tell everybody, I'm a publicist, I'm a manager. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? I, I put your itinerary together. So my job is to connect the dots. So when, when, when I walk you to the water, you know what I mean? And I bring you around, these good people is up to you to work the room. Once you work the room, it makes my job easier. So when I come back and talk to the DJs, they're like, nah, yo, I rock with him, man. He's a good guy. I like his vibe. Yo, he got good energy. Instead of the people that, you know, the artists don't want to really talk or he's on his phone and he's being antisocial and he's really, really far and you really trying to talk to him and he's not even looking at you in your eyes. He's looking at his phone while he's talking to you. And like he's not giving you no feedback. And then if I ask, if I ask him, yo, grab the mic, prayer, grab the mic every time. I had times where artists be like, yo, man, why, bro? Why you want me to perform? Like, yo, it ain't about you to perform, bro. It's about you to vibe with the DJ. It's about the DJ to get something out of you that he's not getting out of the record. It's personal. 
So when you're in the booth and you put your arm around the DJ and and you know they videoing and they and they, they they capturing these moments, that's that's content, man. That shit goes up and 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 that goes a long way. Whoa. Well said. And pray, how did you how did you like when connecting with shampoo on your first promo run? How easy was it to just allow him to kind of take the reins and show you how that guerrilla marketing, you know, grassroots type of promotion is really done. I mean, he has, I mean, you have a great mentor with, uh, you know, with Buster, you know, so I'm sure that he, you know, vouched him said, go to shampoo. He's the one that's going to be able to do what it does. So, well, so, you know, so, so how did it feel when you were first like kind of on the road on the promo run with him and how, like, just talk to me how you felt inside as the record is being received by all of these DJs that are out there. Well, it felt good, man. You know what I mean? Uh, they told me who he was, and I was like, yo, just trust him and, you know, follow his lead. And that's what I did. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, you're going to run around with shampoo. I, I didn't understand what they meant at first, you know what I mean, by run around, but we really ran around. You know what I mean? It was like, yo, come on. We're going to go hit this club up. We went to the spot. You know, he's like, yo, get on the mic. He gave me the mic. I got busy. He was like, come on, prayer. You know, we was, next thing you know, we moving to the exit. We go to another spot. We shoot the jersey. You know what I mean? After that, we bounce to another spot. We in Manhattan. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was an experience, man. You know, learning the ropes and you know, all this is new for me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm usually running from, running from the police and ducking D's. And, you know what I mean? Now we running club to club. You know what I mean? So it was a dope experience. And, you know, things, you know some things you never forget, man. And, you know, I, I was thankful, man. And, you know, like he said, you know, not knowing how to work the room is just being humble, man. You know what I mean? No matter how big you get or how much money you get, always remain humble, man. Humble. You you don't be humble. God gonna humble you. You know what I'm saying? So I always been humble even when I was in the streets, man. You know what I mean? If you ain't humble, there's somebody that will make you humble. In oh, God, God will humble you, man. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm the way I am. I'm real humble, man. You know what I mean? It yeah, goes I mean, both ways, though. Shampoo said it best because it's like at first appearance when you see you, it's like this, you know, you are, you know, you are kind of an intimidating guy, you know, and even like with, with the speech is like, you know, man, what's up? You know, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to like, you know, you know. Ooh, uh, ooh. Yeah, man. Yo, no, yo. And then God bless when you seen him and then you seen big Tony Manchin next to him. They look scary, bro. God bless Tony hey, Manchin, man. Good brother, man. Miss that brother, man. Oh, man. You seen them? You seen Tony Manchin standing behind them? They look like something was gonna happen to you if you came over there, baby. I, I something mean, they was gonna fuck up your t-shirt. Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Like, yeah, so it's like you see him with like the wolves around him, but then as soon yeah. as you you know start talking, you're like, like he's a really good dude, and you know what you're talking about. You you're not like talking yeah. out your ass. It's like everything yeah. you say. You kind of you can feel that you can back up, you know what I'm saying? So it's oh, like yeah. nobody mess with prayer out there because he means business. So um, what was a uh, what was a couple of the, the uh, DJs that you met uh, out with Shampoo? If you could remember, I mean, I know it was like a couple like a couple of years ago now. But. Uh, I met Spazzo. I met uh, I can't remember all of them. Uh, who oh, else? Camillo, even though know, know, even uh, Drewski. Even though Juicy. we met them in the pre yeah. in, in the past, we yeah. we re we rebrand that relationship. You know what I mean? That's right. Because he's about right. coming back out and supporting the DJs. Even though he met Camillo somewhere, I was like, "Yo, we pulling up on Camillo." Oh yeah. shit, yeah, I met him before. And now, yeah. boom, now he's showing them, "Yo, he he fucking with me." All right, that's what's up. Now he playing the record, so he oh. he pretty much met, met every DJ in New York. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I met DJ Self, I met Enough, I met Drewski, Camelo, yeah, Spazzo. Yeah, well, I don't I'm worried. We ran around, man. Uh, I mean, so, so after that promo run, what what came next for you? What was that like, that like it moment where you were kind of like, all right, I, th I think I kind of made it, you know, so now it's time to really put in that work. You know, I, I never, I never had that feeling. I never had that feeling like, yo, I made it. You know what I mean? I even seeing my video on BT, hearing me on the radio, I never got that feeling. You know what I mean? I just, 
I just never stopped grinding. You know what I mean? The grind didn't stop until COVID. You know what I mean? The COVID slowed down a lot and stopped a lot. But, you know, even in COVID, me and Bust were shooting videos. Yeah, what do you think I'm pointing that way for? No, but you fit. The fire hydrants all the way in the front. You know what I'm Yeah. What? Shampoo, you're not pointing a weapon, right? Because we're we're recording. No, no, no. Sorry about that. I'm over oh, there okay. parking over here. I'm over there telling in the park, and they didn't even park it. I'm like, yo, why you think I'm flickering the lights for you to park there, brother? Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we were, I don't know if you were listening, but we were just discussing, you know, um, at, at what point did you feel like, okay, I made it? And he said that, you know, he's he still feels like he's on that grind. So, oh, yeah. yeah. He hasn't had that feeling yet. So no. how you hear it. You 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 hear it in them bars. You hear the pain. You know what I mean? You hear it. You 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 know you 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 hear it. You know what I mean? What do you hear the struggle? You you don't hear that he made it, even though he's 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 on his way. He he's he's still out here chipping away. He's What's still up? out here shaking hands and making sure he connect them dots. So when the big picture comes, you know what I mean, it's all gonna be one. That's wrong. That's right. It's, you know, the grind never stopped. No, it's still grinding, Joe. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's still grinding. So, Champ, in your experience, because I know you've worked in this industry for several years, um, and, and I'm so glad, you know, you you have the time, you know, because I know you are always grinding. You're always doing something. Yeah, we right now, we're we, we going in the studio with the Buchanans right now. That's where I'm parking. That's what's up. So, from your experience, what do you see Prayer's next step you know, in evolution as an artist. I know that, you know, you're not, you know, his label, but you're you're very in tune to what's on the streets right now. So if you could give him, you know, your prediction of what you feel he might be headed towards, give him that little pep talk or, you know. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't dropped the project yet. So we haven't gotten a full body of music from him yet because he's just been dropping singles. So once mm -hmm. we get a full body of music from him, then you really get to feel the journey. You know what I mean? So right now you're just getting glimpse of 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 the preview. You, we you haven't even seen the the, the 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 full motion picture yet. You're just being seen, you're just seeing glimpse of it. So once you see the full body of work from head to toe, I think you know the world is gonna fall in love with him, man, as 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 an all-around artist. You know what I mean? Because like I said, once once you get past the voice. Then you realize he don't sound like Big, and he's not trying to imitate Big at all. He always salutes Big, so he, you know, that's one pair of shoes he's definitely not trying to fill. Once yeah. you get past that and you get to the music, you see how talented he is, and then you're gonna be like, "Yo, I can't wait to hear more," because every time I hear something, I'll be like, "Yo, I, I want to hear more. I, I want to hear him in this lane. I want to hear him in that lane." So I'm always eager, eager, eager to hear more music. So that's what you know the people's gonna definitely get when they hear him drop. They're gonna keep wanting more. Who do you think, who do you think he should collaborate with? If you had if you had to pick like three people, either within his camp or you know or you know just out in the universe. Obviously, you know obviously Drake and Future and you know the megastars. But I'm talking about who do you think is in his alley that he should really collab with in the in the near future. Uh, let me see, an artist that he can collab with in the near future. Um, well, hmm. what you think? Wyclef. I think okay. Wyclef. I think Wyclef will bring a musical, a musical sound out of him. You know what I mean? And he, what he'll bring him that Caribbean sound. You know what I mean? Because he definitely got that patois. And and uh, you know what I mean he he could definitely speak that shit. So I know, it's a Batman thing. Yeah, I know with with Wyclef, I know they could make a fucking smash all around reggae record, a pop record, you know what I mean, some street shit. You know what I mean? I know Wyclef will be able to give them that that joint joint. That you know that that take them that separates them from where from everybody else and and is definitely going to give them a record that he that you ain't never heard him on, so I think fucking with Wyclef will give him that that big record, you know. Yeah, that big one, one that can be pushed like through radio and and mainstream outlets that right. you know you get on those playlists because you know you're a bad man with the lyrics, my brother. You know, so yeah, I got, I got some things coming. 
So who who are you collaborating with now? Or I mean, so spill the beans. Um, I got a I got a joint dropping next call. I told you that's me and Bus on there going back and forth and just going at each other. It's like it's like a it's like a it's like the top battle Titanic. It's just you know what I mean. Just man, it's crazy how me and him just going back and forth on the record. You know that's supposed to drop in a few months. You know, getting you know, lining up for the summer. It's called like a, I told like you, like a Titanic um, in an iceberg right there. Yeah, it's it's crazy, bro. It's, so that's going to be a record to look forward to. I can't wait for the people to hear that. I got a I got a joint with Jeremiah. I'm such a fan of your music. I'm like I'm smiling. I like I can see my smile from ear to ear. I'm like I'm such a fucking fan right now, you know. Because well, I, I got love a, I got music, a, and, I, and I love your story and being that I you know I've known you before, mm -hmm. you know, and seen the come up. It just means that yeah. much more. So now you're gonna be on track with Buster, you know. I can't wait because he crushed it's crazy, everything. Joe. You it's crazy. Everything. This is gonna be a crushing song. I can't wait to hear. Well, um, I got a I got a me and Bus. We got a big record with uh Jeremiah. I got a dope record with Jeremiah. Um, have I got you spoken a, to him recently? Do you know you know how he's feeling? Because I know that he. No, nah, I haven't spoken to him lately, but I got a I got a big record with the homies. Shout out to Jeremiah. Shout out to Jeremiah. Um, who made it through COVID. We had we had some scares with him. The um, I got a joint with Spice. Okay. Um. I got a big record with Taurus Riley. Um, I got a, a another big record. I got a big dope record with uh, Neo. I got some joints, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, you, have any, you have any records within the camp? Like anything with like Murder Mook or Spliff or OT Genesis? Nah. Or yeah, I got one with Spliff. I got one with Spliff. For the parking lot. Um, I don't got nothing with Murder Mook. Uh, we was talking about it though. Um. I got, got I got, got one with um L a track together. Yeah, I got a joint with me and Spliff got an L record. Dope. Me and Spliff got like two records actually. Yo, send me some shit. I won't leak it. I promise. Yeah, you gotta tell Spliff what you hear that Spliff got him. I ain't got him, but Spliff got him. I got like two, three records with Spliff. Um, I got a record with Aaron Cooks, Stove Guard Cooks. He's from the camp. Um. Any collaborations with uh, with Griselda coming up? Because I, I got one. With, I got one with him that's out already on YouTube with oh, Conway. Conway, Conway. That's yeah. right. I was I was watching. Yeah. I'm talking about like I got a joint with Conway the Machine. Yeah, that's what's up right there. They the, mm -hmm. they the bands right now. They, like thank God for them because it's like you obviously know you know what you know era of rap I come from and and the rap that I you know spit. Even though I've had a whole bunch of like pop joints and we tried to you know. Kind of sucker in the white community, and you know, like, oh, he's a pop star. You know, let's get, let's give him that money. But my mm. love is for real grimy, dirty hip hop. You know, yeah. that's what we breed out here in Staten Island. So thank God for Griselda. You know, bringing that light back to you know that grimy era that we love. You know, even though we're sweethearts, you know, what I'm saying we still got yeah. that, that murderous mentality when it comes to you know, you know, the lyrical fucking you know rapping to cause casualties and. You know all of that fucking good shit. So, so you got some joints. Yeah. Okay. So I got a highlight. I saw. Hold on. I got a, a highlight spliff. Yeah. So, yeah. Who do you want to work with? Uh, I want to work with uh Chris Brown. I like. I, I like. You know, I mean, he be making some crazy music. Definitely want to get a joint in with Chris Brown. Um, it's a lot of artists I I, I dig. Um. I definitely want to do a joint with um with um Fat Joe. I want to do a joint with Fat Joe. I'm going to I was Fat Joe. When I was asking Shampoo, I thought he was going to say Fat Joe because yeah. I was thinking about that immediately. Um, like that late one he just dropped. He should have had me on the out of body that. Oh, that sunshine, yo! You yeah, should I, do. I'd have bought it though. He should have. He should have do the remix to that shit. He should have hollered at me. I'd have. I'd have bought that home for him. Little 12 bars of death on them, smooth. And, oh, man, I'd have given him a real ill smoothie for that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, lace that joint. Oh, yeah. The list goes on and on, man. It's, it's too much to think of right now, but it's there's a lot of artists out there I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, man. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I like Future. I think Future is dope. Um. Well, so uh, 
I could definitely hear like DV alias Christ on the hook of one of your joints. No question about it. You know, he, he definitely got that grimy, you know, sound that singing, rapping, you know, sort of. I mean, he he hanging with Spliff, so Spliff can set that up in two seconds. Yeah, I want to do a joint with um. I always wanted to do a joint with Fab and Jada because that's who I wanted on my remix. I I mean, I want to. I definitely want to get a you know get that in a joint. Me, Fab, and Jada. You yeah, know, what I mean, I think that would be legendary. You know what I mean? I I, I think you. I think you with all of them that with with the locks, yeah. you know, with with Dipset. I mean, you could kill it with everyone because your style meshes with everyone, and you got bars that you know literally you know are sharp as steel. So, yeah. so I, what was it like the first time actually working with Buster? Like, talk to me about how you felt while you were in the studio and you're rapping, and you know that Buster, one of the greats, you know. You know, ladies in the yeah, studio, I, you know, like I did, I did a song, I did a song with Buster first night I met him. Wow. We, we, did, we did a song called me, Judgment. Me and Lou are gonna talk. We gotta make this movie. This is yeah. we have to make this movie. Shampoo, are you are you listening? We need to make this movie. YMVS is the label. Let's make it happen. Call Buster Bus. Let's do it and bring the Cavassier. Yo, sorry about that. <laughs> Everything good? I just heard you say my name. I just came in the studio. We good? Yeah, we good. I just wanted to say that. That's it. Yo, say what up? Pray it. 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 Pray this is how we party, Oh, right? man, we, we we cooking up, baby, getting ready. You know what I mean? That's so, right, yo, right, prayer right. with love. You know I'm here for you. Yeah, right, when we right, ready sir. to run, you know I'm ready to run. All right, baby. Damn, Paul, love, love. love. Yo, I'll keep see, verifying. See, keep verifying and verifying. Appreciate you. One see love, baby. See Peace. Look, love. So talk to me about how you felt while you were recording, because I've been in the studio, like, so I'll just give you my quick story, so this way, you know, people can have some context to it. So the first time that I'm rapping in the studio with Smooth the Hustler and Trigger the Gambler, you know, some of the illest lyricists, you know, that gangster rap has ever seen, you know, Broken Language did a fucking, uh, like a topsy turvy mind fuck to the whole way that people actually spit. And I'm conscious of this while I'm in there, not to mention I'm in kind of like a grimy studio. So as I'm spitting, I know that I'm going to be judged. Even though they heard a couple of my songs, it's still like now we're making a song together. So it's like, you know, we got that uh, that artist, you know, MC mentality like, yo, I'm not going to let anyone outshine me on this. So I'm going I'm to I'm kick my hardest shit and I'm going to do it the best way that I can and I'm going a, I'm to a kill it. So mentally, as I'm rapping, I'm trying not to forget my words, but trying to also be perfect and spit you know, the most lyrical shit that I can that I've already had, you know, memorized, but make it sound so crystal clear so that I get the respect because I know that I'm going to do all this. So I'm wondering how you felt as you were spitting in the booth. I want to know what your your mentality was or were you just like kill, kill, kill? Um, I didn't really, I didn't really have no thought. Like just, I was just regular, man. Like, you know, I've been through so much. Like I, most of the time, I just be feeling like I be dreaming. You know what I mean? I don't like I don't be feeling like it's real. Like I be feeling like every it's weird. Like as I'm going, as I'm doing something, it feel like I've done it before. Like it's just like weird. Deja vu type of thing. Yeah, like, like deja vu. You know what I mean? So I just I, I mean, just let it play. I mean, you know, that, that's just a glitch in the matrix. It happens. Yeah, I just let it play out. You know what I mean? I just let it play out. And I just keep going. I see. Now, now I see why you don't smoke or you don't drink, because no. you it you you live a high. It's like <laughs> you thought you it's your birthday. You think you're gonna get set up going to the same place that Tupac, you know, got ran in on. You know, no. and all of a sudden now you are recording a song with Busta Rhymes on your birthday, and he tells you he's gonna sign you. That's crazy. You know what I mean? like, a lot of a lot of. You know, a lot of things that happened to me in my life, man, when I sit down and I look back at it and I think about it, 
a lot if people if a lot of things if I had somebody to co-sign things I said, people be like, man, I can't believe that really happened. So I don't believe that really happened. So people, you know, like they just don't know. Like so sometimes I don't even talk about most of the things that I've ha- that I've done or that happened to me because people gonna be like, nah, like they're not gonna believe it. Man, my life is I can't believe the things that happened to me and it happened to me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got I got I got people who've been around for certain things like D Block, you know, my sister husband, you know, a couple of people that have been around me that seen a lot of impossible things that I've done happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, just having people around Mansion done, you know, Mansion not here no more, but he not witnessed a lot of things and you know what I mean? Like, it's just un- you know, just unbelievable, man. That's why I miss him so much. And, and you know, I say his name on songs a lot, so much that my manager's like, "Yo, you gotta take it easy on Mansion." You know what I mean? I, I, you know, we, he lived with he lived with us. You know what I mean? He lived with me for like a year. You know what I mean? So he was more, you know, he was my bodyguard, but he was also my friend. You know what I mean? So you know, it's hard sometimes. You know what I mean? I mean, let, I, mean listen, I think it's appropriate. We we can give a quick moment of silence for for the God Tony Mansion. So you know, real fast. Mm. All right, Tony, we love you, bro. I'll, I'll be smoking a blunt for you. Oh no. So so you record the song with Buster, and now things are you know kind of starting to take off, and then COVID hits. What's the plan of attack now? Uh, you know, like I said, we got we got a couple of joints. We're gonna we're gonna drop the I told you, hopefully in uh, May. You know what I mean? April, May, we're gonna drop the I told you record and tear the sum up, and we're gonna be in the A, man. We got some shows coming up in Miami. You know what I mean? This summer, I got some shows in Miami coming up, and we're just gonna keep splashing and ripping up the charts and. Keep dropping this fire, you know what I mean, till they till they recognize and realize, you know what I mean? Oh, they oh they will. They will. And because this you on the verified podcast. This is the best podcast in the whole world, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, well, well. I mean, I'm growing, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I have yeah. I mean, so far every guest that I've had has been legendary, you know, and the stories that I get to hear, you know, is incredible. And I tell everyone, you know, on my podcast, it's like I get to tell my story while learning yours, even though <laughs> experienced it firsthand so it's like it's such a joyous moment you know when i see you know the the prosperity that you've had and it's like it's like I, i've literally seen you come from nothing and turn it into something and i just wanted to say you know once again if i haven't said it i'm proud of you bro so you just I appreciate it bro. i appreciate you man. and you're on strict orders you have to succeed that's it like i appreciate you man because yeah. god's gonna judge and then so am i but I appreciate you, Joe. I appreciate you even more. Now, before I let you go, what's one thing that you want people simply to know about you that you don't think maybe they, like, if you think you're misunderstood in any way, what's one thing that you'd like the people to know about you? You know, I come from, come from, I come from some hard times and you know, I'm, I'm a good dude, but I also could be bad. You know what I mean? Don't judge me. Don't judge me for my past. You know what I mean? And, you know, give me a chance because I'm going to give you some good music and, you know what I mean? I'm going to make you dance. You know what I mean? So, just, you know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't judge me for, for my sound. You know what I mean? Just, just get ready. You know what I mean? And, I'm gonna do some good music. I'm gonna do some feel good music. I'm gonna do some pain. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take you through. To, I'm gonna walk you through my life. You know what I mean? And, and you are gonna get some bars. Yeah, bars you know I mean? like, with like 17 S's after the R. Bars. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm gonna take you on a roller coaster, man, and of emotions and love and pain and. All type of shit, you know what I mean? Don't so kill, this, don't, don't kill me too much because I feel music differently than others. So you know, yeah. Yeah, tell me which ones are the real emotional ones to skip over until I'm a good in a good like mental state where I can. Yeah, you're you gonna you gonna hear them, you gonna feel them. You know what I mean? So oh, I, was, I feel everything. Like I said, I'm I'm a fan 
you know, besides like knowing you, you know, it's like, I'm a fan of your music. So I want you to keep yeah. growing and growing. If there's anything I could ever do, you know, to, to help you in any way, you know, I'm always down one of the squad. Uh, I, I had Bobby that was supposed to jump in and give you a surprise, but he signed in earlier and I clicked remove. So I don't know if that prohibited him from jumping back on. So Bobby, I'm sorry, but you know, I told you to jump in at the time that I told you to jump in, not just try it, but we'll do it again sometime. So pray, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Uh, because we, we're going to wrap up because I know that I've taken up so much of your time and I know you got to get back to your lady and to, you know, your beautiful daughter and your wonderful son. So I'm not trying to hold you from that. Well, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm here, man. I mean, you can find me on YouTube. Or you can hit me up on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, The Real Prayer. You know what I mean? I'm on YouTube, The Real Prayer. You know what I'm saying? Follow me. Hit me up. Yeah, oh, yeah. We verified, baby. My brother, I appreciate you. I want to leave you with uh, a little quote that I always end off my podcast with that I apply to life, and hopefully you apply it to yours. Yeah. We are all here for a small cup of coffee. I'm just trying to drink it while it's still hot. I'm your boy. I am Joe Paul. This has been the Verified Podcast brought to you by Radio Pushers and Results of No Hype. Check us out at theverifiedpodcast.com. We were just chopping it up with the real prayer. My boy, going places. You better look out for him. And don't piss him off. My brother, I love you. Peace and love. I love Joe. Love.